Fable is an RPG created by Lionhead Studios and published by Microsoft for the original Xbox. Fable is the story of a young boy who becomes a hero and sets off on an adventure to find his family. A central theme in Fable, and its sequels, is that actions have consequences, and that the player's choice affects the world around them. Peter Molyneux, the game's head designer, is notorious for promising more than his games end up delivering. But you know, even a 15-year-old kid can buy into the, the idea of getting married. And then he started doing this strange thing. He then took the girl's father, who was the mayor, who was very rich, and killed him. And then he went back to his house where his wife lived and killed her. And of course it dawned on me that he'd realized that when the mayor died, all his money would be, get, would be left to the daughter, and when she died, all her money would be left to him. Despite this, the game released to be a critical and commercial success, and is regarded as one of the best titles to be released on the original Xbox. Fable served as a baseline for a series that would go on to spawn several sequels and spin-off titles. On September 20th, 2005, about a year after the first game's initial release, an expanded version was released called Fable The Lost Chapters for Xbox, PC, and Mac. It featured additional content, an unreleased epilogue, a new playable region, and a new ending to the story. In the 13 years that followed, a small group of gamers have transformed Fable The Lost Chapters from an epic adventure to an 80-minute sprint. This is the story of Fable The Lost Chapters speedrunning history. Before we dive in, let's cover a few basics. In Fable, the player controls a young boy who is recruited by the renowned Heroes Guild after his village and family are attacked and taken away from him. After training in combat and magic, the hero sets out on an adventure. He soon gets caught up in a fight of good and evil, with the fate of the world hanging in the balance. The game's main mechanic is a karma alignment system, where the player's actions have good or bad karma associated with them. The choices you make in the game will shape the world around you, as well as yourself. Commit good deeds and the people in town will love and respect you. Commit bad deeds, however, and they will run in fear and an aura of death will appear around you. While this mechanic doesn't affect the speedrun too much, it's an important detail that this video will mention from time to time. Another important mechanic is the combat multiplier. By consistently hitting opponents and doing damage, while avoiding damage yourself, you keep a fight combo going that increases the amount of experience you get from all sources. If you run out of targets to hit, the combat multiplier will start to decrease until you either hit another enemy or it runs out entirely. The hero can train and grow in three separate fields, strength, skill, and will. Strength is the field of physical strength and determines melee damage dealt and taken, as well as overall health. Skill is the field of agility and dexterity, and determines attack speed, bow efficiency, and stealth. Finally, Will is the field of magic, filled with a variety of unique spells for combat. These skills can be upgraded using experience points at your home base, the Heroes Guild. From the Heroes Guild, the hero also takes on quests from the map room, which is how the main story progresses. The main category ran for Fable the Lost Chapters is any percent where players try to beat the game by any means necessary as fast as possible. While there are a few other categories for this game, we will not be focusing on them. The earliest information about Fable speedruns comes from forum posts on Speed Demos Archive. 
a user by the name of Dissidus Dazidus comes forward with a 2 hour and 16 minute run, according to the in-game timer. While this run was better than the claims of several hours, it is essentially a fast, casual playthrough and doesn't resemble much of the speedruns that would follow it. On August 12, 2005, another user, Thrinky, posts a video of himself beating the game in 1 hour and 51 minutes. The route that Thrinky uses has the distinction of being both unique and unorthodox. This run could likely be considered one of the first modern speedruns, albeit an unoptimized one. One of the biggest optimizations in Thrinky's run, versus Dizidus Dazidus' run, is the inclusion of rolling. Using conventional wisdom, Dizidus Dazidus thought the fastest way to move throughout the game was by sprinting. Instead, Thrinky rolls repeatedly, which overall saves time. Thrinky uses the spell Inflame throughout the run. This saves time because Inflame does a flat damage regardless of other stats. Thrinky is also able to skip the Heroes Guild training at the beginning of the game. When you are taken to the Heroes Guild for the first time, you will normally have to work through the tedious training sessions. However, if you attack the Guildmaster at the right time, the Guildmaster will tell you to stop, which ends the training session and allows you to move on. Overall, the training skips save about a minute and a half. While this is one of the first modern runs and introduces many tricks and optimizations, it is not without its quirks. With some fortunate RNG, Thrinky comes across a wandering salesman who happens to be carrying a small stack of an item called a Crunchy Chick, which is a food item that gives you bad karma. Thrinky backtracks to a previous map and visits the Greatwood Gorge Demon Door. This door's challenge requires a very evil hero or a very evil deed. Fortunately, Thrinky happened to come across that salesman with something that will give you bad karma. Eating the stack of chicks in front of the door, he gains access to its contents, a legendary weapon called Wello's Pickhammer. Thrinky then uses this weapon for the remainder of the run, sticking to melee attacks and the spell Inflame for most of the run's combat sections. Wello's Pickhammer is a fairly good weapon for the middle of the game, because to buy a weapon of similar value would cost several thousand gold. Thrinky was able to obtain the Pickhammer for just the cost of a stack of crunchy chicks, which is a few hundred gold. And while the weapon served him well throughout most of the run, it eventually lost its potency towards the end, which cost him some time. These two runs came relatively quick after one another, and while there are still plenty of optimization to be had in Thrinky's run, people simply weren't running this game at the time. For these reasons and more, his run would stand uncontested for the next five years. At the time that Thrinky had submitted his run, Fable the Lost Chapters had yet to be released, all future runs covered in this video will be on Fable The Lost Chapters. Around 2010, there was a renewed interest in the game and its speedrunning potential. As the re-release of Fable had added new content to the game, there was potential for the speedrunning community to be revitalized. On February 8, 2010, David Arnold, aka Bpop100, submitted a 1 hour 37 minute run to Speed Demos Archive. Even though Fable The Lost Chapters added new content and several quests to the game, Bpop 100 still managed to beat Thrinky's 151. In Thrinky's run, he knew that sprinting wasn't the fastest way to move throughout the game. He was able to improve on Dizidus Dazidus' run by simply rolling from place to place. However, Bpop was able to take it one step further. In between his rolls, Bpop used the Assassin Rush spell, which is a forward moving dash that has the ability to snap you behind a target's back. Performing a roll between assassin rushes takes just enough time for the rush spell's cooldown to wear off, allowing for constant assassin rush to roll movement. This technique, referred to as rush rolling, is a fast and effective movement tech. Implementing rush rolling would have been enough for Bpop to beat Thrinky's run, but Bpop didn't stop there. There was a new exploit introduced to Fable TLC called the Buy Sell Glitch, which allows you to get substantially more gold than the game expects you to have. To put it simply, the game is a mechanic where shops will sell items for a discount if they have a lot of that item in stock. Consequently, shops will buy goods from you for a premium if they are out of stock themselves. By buying all of the trader's goods for cheap and then selling it back to them for a profit, the calculations work out in the player's favor big time. 
By trading in high priced gifts or even pricier food items, runners can amass tens or hundreds of thousands of gold in minutes. By using this glitch, Beepop buys an ebony longbow and obsidian greatsword. In the first 15 minutes, Beepop has a weapon more powerful than Wello's Pickhammer, the weapon Thrinky used for his entire run. Even better, the ability to procure these weapons wasn't rooted in RNG. Before leaving Bowerstone, Beepop also steals a special potion called the Ages of Might potion. These Ages potions will grant the hero 1000 experience in its respective field, times the current combat multiplier. One of the reasons why Thrinky wouldn't go for these potions is because in the original fable, these potions only give 100 experience, not 1000. Beepop takes full advantage of the XP increase in Fable TLC to maximize his stats. Beepop also fishes up an Ages of Skill potion from a pond he passes by in Lookout Point. During the Orchard Farm quest, Beepop carefully goes through the waves of enemies being sure to avoid taking hits and dealing damage often enough to obtain a solid multiplier. At the end of the combat, at his highest combat multiplier, Beepop uses his Ages of Might and Skill potions allowing him to improve his physique and speed the next time he returns to the guild. Beepop uses these potions two more times in his run, during the White Balvering quest and during the arena. With the use of the Physical Shield spell, Beepop effortlessly builds up his multiplier with no fear of losing it to stray hits. Beepop is able to gain 60,000 more experience in each field, which is a vast improvement over Thrinky's run. Using the experience boost, Beepop upgrades his stats way beyond those of Thrinky's, allowing him to cut through the rest of the game's combat with ease. After the arena, the only major difference between Thrinky's run and Beepop's is Thrinky utilizes the Inflame spell for almost every combat, while Beepop uses powerful weapons he obtained from the Buy Cell glitch in conjunction with the Berserk spell and Multi Strike. An important note to add is that after Beepop's 1 hour 37 minute time, the community stopped tracking time with the in game timer. Most speed games of the time used the in game timer because of an old rule on Speed Demo's archive, where most speedruns were posted. However, the in game timer was not very accurate. Beepop's 137 was actually a 15050 RTA, and Thrinky's 151 was really a 20243. With a myriad of new tricks introduced to the run and even more potential for time save, the run would be left alone to stand for another four years. Starting in July 2014, a new runner, Blasted T, started streaming attempts on Twitch, with a few improvements over Beepop's run. While Blasted T wasn't there quite yet, Beepop finally had some real competition. On July 6, 2014, Blasted finally broke the world record with the time of 148.50 RTA. It was a battle that will be talked about for centuries Literally. to come. To the day the there. hero of Oakvale slew the dragon, Jack of Blades. <sighs> That's nice. Nice solid 148.50. And then would go on to lower it further to 148.27. It was a battle that... Let's see if the credits work. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was going to happen or not. But it's rather nice. And then, then the credits... Holy shit! While largely following the route from Beepop's run, Blasted T made small adjustments along the way. Buying augments from the arena shop, using new combat strategies, and utilizing different level up paths to name a few. While Blasted T had emerged and claimed the record, he wasn't the only one with their eyes set on speedrunning Fable. Every community has people who are fundamental to the game's growth as a speed game. For every speedrunning community, there is a player who is that game's historian, that game's knowledge center. Someone who is developing and discovering new speed tech constantly. Meet Adam. While he was but a new runner in 2014, he would go on to become one of the most knowledgeable Fable players both in and outside of the speedrunning community. Blasted T and Edom first met in a Reddit thread in July of 2014, and quickly decided to work together to break apart the run. They would trade the world record back and forth several times as they began to hammer out the perfect route. But it was, it was me meeting uh, Blasted T that sort of like we both sort of said, sort of pulled our fingers out and said, right, let's actually make a route and work together to find stuff. Because I remember like the when we first met, it was like, we found so much stuff in like that very first few days. 
it was basically like every day we'd just be like, oh, found a new strat, found a new strat, multiple times a day sort of thing. Over the next three months, Edom and Blasted T lowered the world record down 12 times from a 148.27 to a 134.20. He throw away his mask, he's dumped and possessed, and the game ends. Hooray! Yeah, that's him dead. I don't have to chuck the mask. It was a battle that will be talked about. Hooray! Sub 145. <laughs> One forty three seventeen, new world record. Holy shit, I one cycle jack. <laughs> Holy it shit. Was a battle that will be talked about for centuries to come. To the dragon. That's a good run. I'll admit that's a good run. Strange creep. It was a battle that will be talked about for centuries to come. It was a battle that a run that had stood for four years had been lowered by over 16 minutes. What were Blasted T and Adam doing to continuously lower their times? Largely, the time save came from optimizing the route, which came from Adam's months of routing the game in early 2014. By making fewer mistakes and playing better, the two were able to lower the world record a combined 14 times in just 90 days. I met Blasted, so when was that thread main? I think it was like August or July or something? Yeah, July 5th, and that was sort of like when we both started working together. Because at the time, I'd only done a couple of runs. I was more like, I sort of did one or two runs that didn't really go anywhere. And then I just spent like six months routing. Like every day I would, I would try and root a little bit more of the game and figure out a little bit more of the game and optimize this little bit or something and sort of work my way down. And then obviously having, having a second person really helped because it was... In my mind, I was like, oh, yes, this is the optimal strat. But then someone else might look at it and go, well, why aren't you just doing this, this and that? It's obviously quicker. And you're like, I would have never thought of that. So it's like almost like peer reviewing each other's work. Adam and Blasted T would go back and forth, testing out new ideas and strategies. If a strat turned out to be faster, the other run would drop the old strat and switch to the new one. This iterative back and forth process is what helped drive the record down so far in such a small period of time. Many improvements came from quest line choice. Of the several quest options available, Orchard Farm and the Hero's Souls quest were the most debated. I was the initial person who said, right, let's let's try doing attack Orchard Farm. Or sorry, protect Orchard Farm rather than attack Orchard Farm, because I think in all my days of playing Fable, I'd only ever done attack Orchard Farm like twice, but even then I could see it was slow in the SDA run, which used attack Orchard Farm. So... That was one of the things where I was like, this is this is definitely quicker. And the other thing that we, we had a lot of back and forth about, I remember, is whether what Hero Souls were the fastest. The other major quest line was the Hero's Souls quest at the end of the game. The player is required to collect three souls in order to enter the final boss area. The Arena Soul, the Heroine Soul, and the Oldest Soul. So we were both in agreement that Killing Thunder was the fastest thing. But Blasted was convinced that going to collect um, your mother's soul and then Nostro's soul was quicker, and I was convinced that doing the whole evil route was quicker. Briar Rose was quickly found to be a faster fight than traveling to the Oakvale Memorial Garden and fighting the Wraiths. The Guildmaster would also win out on the oldest soul fight. With the quests out of the way, the item route had to be worked out as well. In the past, runners made use of legendary weapons like Wello's Pick Hammer in the run. This could partly explain what inspired Edom and Blasted to try out another legendary weapon, the Sentinus. Between the archaeologist's hideout and Knothole Glade, there's a temple dedicated to the god of light, Afo. 
By donating a large sum of money, around 30,000 gold, the temple offers you a great mace called the Sentinus. By performing the buy-sell glitch mentioned earlier in Oakvale, players have around 110,000 gold with them by the time they make it to Witchwood region. Edith and Blasted would stop into the temple on their way to Knothole Glade to pick up the Sentinus weapon, which deals a lot of damage and already comes equipped with a silver and piercing augment. Eventually, though, the Sentinus would fall out of favor for the Master Greatsword, that while slightly weaker, had open augment slots, cost less, and was easier to buy. While Blasted T and Edom continued their back and forth, and as Twitch grew in popularity, another runner was entering the fold in October 2014. This is Giant Steps 92, who had been running Fable longer than Blasted T had been. When Giant Steps discovered the larger Fable community in October of that year, he saw a run that was further optimized and a community more alive than ever. In November 2014, a new thread is resurrected in the Speed Demos Archive forum by a user named Valiant North. He claimed to have broken this game. As brash of a claim as it was, his claims turned out to only be slightly exaggerated. Valiant North had discovered a new trick. Well, not exactly. Back in 2006, it was known that using the summon spell, followed by an assassin rush, would let you dash to your summon clone. It was like, he... He found the summon clipping, or he, he, it was not even that he found it, it was that it was already a known thing of, oh, hey, you can like get on some tables and stuff with summon clipping, with summon. Um, I think even back then I knew about getting under the floor in Archon's Folly, which is still like a tradition today of go under the floor, show off a little bit and then crash the game. But no one ever thought that you could skip stuff with it. Using this technique, you could summon a clone onto a ledge and dash up to it, allowing you to go out of bounds. As long as you had a line of sight, you could almost always dash to your clone. Valiant North discovered you can actually dash through objects if the conditions are right. By summoning a clone that is partially in bounds but has their back out of bounds, you can dash behind the clone and clip out of bounds, even if the clone is spawned in the wall. And that was like, there was a week of us freaking out about oh my god this is going to be insane because if you look at the um at the forum post by valiant north he he hypes it up a lot i'll be honest he hypes it up a lot and saying oh yeah we can we can skip basically everything in the game and then it turned out to be like oh yeah we can skip like two things in total the first and most consistent clip was on the cliff top path normally this area was patrolled by bandit guards and you had to kill them with a ranged weapon before they spotted you otherwise the area would go on lockdown by going to this area before starting the quest, it is possible to run right through it. Since the quest hasn't been started, the door to the next area is closed, but with the clip, it doesn't matter anymore. With a well-placed summon, you can clip right through the door and enter the next area. Additionally, the area remains uninhabited as it's outside of the quest, which makes traveling through at full speed far easier and less risky. Overall, if done correctly, this trick can save 1-2 to two minutes. After months of practice and some new speed tech at his disposal, Giant Steps had finally risen to the top. On February 3rd of 2015, Giant Steps is doing PB attempts on Twitch. It starts off as a fairly decent run. All of his splits are green, but never more than 10 seconds of time save, even with the summon clip. When Giant Steps gets to Witchwood, things start to get interesting. He gets gold split after gold split. Giant Steps leaves the arena being 1 minute and 37 seconds ahead of his personal best. No way. This could be a world record. With solid movement, Giant Steps continues to save more and more time, all the way up and through Bargate Prison, leaving the prison 2 minutes faster than his personal best, officially ahead of world record pace. Giant Steps remained on pace all the way to the Northern Wastes, where he showed off a new time save in Necropolis. When collecting the glyphs for the Oracle, Giant's brother, Good Toast, Notice that the contents of each grave were tied to the name on the headstone. So instead of digging up every grave, hoping for the right item, Giant only had to read the headstones to find the three correct graves. This strat, along with some fortunate RNG, saved Giant Steps another 25 seconds. Giant Steps got a 133.32 RTA, beating the world record by 48 seconds. 133.32! Yes! That's it! <laughs> ah, ladies and gentlemen, world record! We beat world record by 50 seconds! Ah! Ah! 
I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to do. Cat, do you know what to do? My cat is freaked. He's like, what are you doing? Look at that. The most chill guy you've ever seen. Giant Steps Run was nothing short of spectacular. It garnered some attention in its own right, and ultimately would lead to two new runners picking up the game, KJ Freshly and Clean Sarah. We'll talk about Clean Sarah in a little bit, but first, we have to talk about KJ Freshly. KJ Freshly had been in Giant Steps chat for some time, and inspired by his speedruns, KJ picked up one of his favorite games and tried his hand at running Fable. KJ picks up the run pretty quickly, and within two weeks was already streaming world record attempts. One of the reasons for KJ's meteoric rise to the top was because he noticed a trick that other runners weren't implementing in their run. Valiant North, known for decreeing he broke the game on the Speed Demos Archive forum, had mentioned in his post that he was replacing Assassin Rush Rolling with Berserk Rush Rolling because it was significantly faster. The predominant movement used throughout the game was to alternate between Assassin Rush and Forward Rolls. However, while in Berserk mode, you actually roll faster, almost twice as fast as normal. So by combining the two spells, using Assassin Rush and then rolling when Berserked, you move significantly faster. KJ picked up this movement tech and rolled with it. From mid-February through June of 2015, KJ fervently ran Fable, implementing new strategies, summon clips, and movement routing into the run. In fact, KJ would dominate the leaderboard with 14 world records in 2015 alone. Holy crap, you guys! Holy shit! <laughs> the reason I got the first world record was just berserk rolling and how they were doing assassin rush roll the whole game and as you know probably from watching runs like you can't assassin rush all the time you'll back rush the mob and so they're just rolling and so there's a huge amount of dead space in the run where you're just doing rolls and for some reason Nobody, I guess nobody saw yet that it's like, oh, Berserk makes you roll like twice as fast. And especially early game. When you get max speed, it's not that big of a difference. I've never seen him do that move. Weird. GG. We got 131, boys. World record by 54 seconds. I was just actually telling a friend, like, kind of looking back on it, reminiscing a little bit with a friend of mine, and it was, uh, there was a time where it was basically almost, like, a world record every week. Yeah. With KJ, for this, like, long period of time. I just two-cycled Jack, you guys. It was a bad But, and, and I think it was maybe a little bit controversial to a couple people, the fact that I just kind of stole world record by basically berserk rolling and maybe not necessarily doing every little bit of the game as good as Edim or Giant Steps, just Berserk rolling was just so much faster. Wow, that was a true two cycle right there. He didn't even need an extra hit. Wow. Wow. I didn't know I would get sub 128.30. Wow, not bad. For the crappy run that that was, that's all right. First one of the day, world record. For the most part, this was achieved through more summon clips being discovered in February 2015. These summon clips are located at the Bandit Camp and are used to bypass every single door from the cliff top path to Twin Blades Tent, which saves a couple minutes. And we realized every gate in Bandit is clippable and that you didn't basically need to do any part of that quest the way you're meant to. It's funny. Um, and then all the clips kind of sprawled out from there. Additionally, KJ also uses Barrier Clip and Demon Door Clip. Barrier Clip is a clip used in Rescue the Archaeologist 2, 
Oddly enough, this clip was found during a meme race for no upgrades between Edom, Giant Steps, and KJ Freshly. Yeah. Dude, I'm actually getting one one time, one time attempt. Dude, I clipped through the barrier. You clipped through the... Whoa. One, Which barrier? One try. I did it on first try, too. That oh, that's about. actually like new strat. New strat level. Of... That actually is like new strat level. On, on wow. the uh, prison, did you see it? Uh, I'm watching your stream now. It's... Oh, dude. dude! Dude! What is it? Throughout the game, there are puzzles called Demon Doors. Remember in Thrinky's run when he bought a stack of crunchy chicks and ate them in front of a demon door to collect a better than average weapon ahead of time? It's possible to summon clip through those doors, because their load zones are always there, they're just closed. There are a couple of places throughout the run where a player is forced to talk to a demon door or to solve its puzzle. Summon clipping skips all of these, which ultimately saves several seconds throughout the run. I'm just also trying to remember what was found in between then. Because another thing I remember was the um, the demon door clip um, in Witchwood was giant steps. It might have been blasted or KJ. I think it was K uh, It would have been myself, giant, and KJ. We were on a Skype call and we um, were working on all of the clips and most specifically um, the clip in. Uh, Witchwood, and I remember because I I had a lot of trouble with it. Giant and Giant and KJ sort of worked out the um, the strat for that, like the the exact methodology of how to get there. It was a battle that we talked about. It was a battle that would be talked about for centuries to come. The day of the hero. Nice run. Or not. It was a battle. I still lost time? Come on. For centuries to come. The day of the hero of Oakvale slew. We got sub 125.30. It's done. It is done. It's done! That is the urn. To urn has happened. Yes! 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 Yes. Towards the end of May 2015, KJ submitted a world record time of 1.2307. Something was different though. This run was in French. World record. While most of the dialogue in the game is skipped, there is one section that has a long diatribe that is outside of a cutscene, Bargate Prison. While you're in your cell, the guard and your neighboring cellmate both talk to you for several minutes, while you can do nothing but sit there and listen. I remember Edom and I sitting down for a good chunk of time, a few hours at least, doing prison. Okay, that's miserable enough. Just doing <laughs> prison with every language pack, just to see what was fastest. And then... After hours of testing, it was determined that playing the game in French saves 34 seconds over English, so every world record attempt after May 2015 would be in French. I think it was just a process of that, me being more fluid, bonking less. I mean, the fable bonk is more just like you get glued to a wall or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then that just started happening less and less. Um, my menuing started to get better and better, and those two core fundamental things, it's just... I, I had the framework down, and then I just started polishing and polishing and polishing. And, and now it's like, even when I do runs now, it's hard to not lose time. Just because if one enemy is slightly out of place, that causes you not to be able to assassin rush, or assassin rush in a non-optimal direction, that's like multiple seconds gone, yeah. just chunk by chunk. 120 24. 
Is that world record? That sounds that's like world record almost world. That's a 40 second world record. There were two notable optimizations to the route, however faster maze training and using fewer Aegis potions. After your initial training in the guild, the player must pass one final exam a fight with Maze, your mentor. You must hit him several times with each category of combat melee, ranged, and will. Normally, in the melee segment, Maze will initially teleport away from you and then block all of your attacks, making you reel back after each strike. However, it was discovered that there was a rare possible teleport spot where you can get behind Maze and attack him before he has a chance to block, allowing you to freely combo him. This saves around 10 seconds in the fight just from less distance to cover and not being blocked after every hit. The next big time save was cutting out the Aegis Potion from the Grey House before the arena fight. In order to guarantee enough experience to buy all the necessary upgrades after Arena for the rest of the run, runners would make a detour to the Grey House to pick up an Ages of Skill and Will Potion. In order to get these potions, they had to take out about 7 undead enemies. By cutting out this detour, KJ saved around 50 seconds. In order to cover the experience difference, KJ would make use of the massive combat multiplier in the Arena to farm Will experience by spamming the summon spell. The summon spell can be recast every frame, and the spell can be assigned to multiple hotkeys. By mashing all the hotkeys, it's possible to cast summon around a dozen times a second. Each cast only uses a small amount of willpower, so spamming the spell doesn't eat through your potion reserve too fast. Each cast of the spell grants 3 will experience, times your current combat multiplier. Since it's possible to reach upwards of 100x on the combat multiplier, Runners can spam Summon to earn over 3,000 experience per second. And since the arena section is about 10 minutes long, with a good amount of downtime, runners can easily make up the experience they would get with the Aegis Potions. This technique was originally a 100% only strat, but Edom brought the idea over to any percent to save more time in the run. These two time saves combined only save about a minute though. The other minute and a half come from movement and menu optimizations. I started seriously getting the movement of every single map down i started recognizing the patterns when you can rush when you can't minimizing any mistakes in the movement because really at the core of the game is the movement every map and the menuing as days turn to weeks and weeks turn to months kj's meteoric ascension to the top of the fable speedrunning community would grind to a halt he was his own competition and he had set the bar very high for himself as the time went lower the world record approached a new barrier 120. KJ's sum of best showed that a sub 120 was possible, but it would be predicated on really good RNG. While good RNG would be necessary, a new time save was found that would help KJ break the 120 barrier. In 2014, Adam and Blasted determined that the Guildmaster Soul was faster than the Nostro Soul. As it would turn out, getting Nostro Soul was way faster. We we no longer do the Guildmaster as the final soul that we get. Right, which is a very very slow tedious method and never really had a good solid strat which is part of the reason i really didn't like it um because it also involves getting hit while in berserk to do enough damage to one shot the guards and there was sort of a timing involved with a dialogue track that we started to theorize well maybe if there's three guards left alive and we kill them all at the same time maybe that dialogue track won't play and we'll get a little bit of time save and this is another example of other people's knowledge like Adam's being greater than mine figured out using a uh, pretty speedy warp method that uh nostro is in fact much faster much more consistent much easier in all, Nostro's quest option saves 33 seconds over the Guildmasters. With careful execution and some good RNG, Sub 120 became possible. Finally, on April 22, 2017, KJ broke through the 120 wall with a A few months later, KJ would come back to fix a few of his larger mistakes, like a bad Ship of the Drowned fight and snag a 119.51. Woo! 
Okay, I want you guys to see. That is a PB. It is a PB. It's a world record. If you look at the real time comparison, that's a four second <laughs> RTA world record. The run wasn't perfect. A run like this never will be, but it was damn impressive. KJ would eventually grow tired of grinding out attempts with little reward, and would put Fable TLC down in favor of Fable Anniversary, the HD remake of Fable TLC. As KJ moved on, it seemed as though the 11951 would be the world record for a long time to come. The Fable community continued to work on strategies and ideas for the run after KJ retired. Several tricks and ideas were thrown around, but most of them ended up not saving any time. However, there were a few ideas that stuck, including a save and load in childhood to freeze the time of day, using the spinning blades trap in the arena to increase your melee damage output while berserked, and a new technique in the Fireheart puzzle room. In the puzzle room, movement is restricted to just up, down, left, and right on a grid. However, it is possible to perform a punch after each cutscene that takes place between boards. By punching, you move forward, triggering the square above you. Then, the game tries to put you back on the grid by placing you down and right, the block immediately right of the starting block. This kind of move is impossible normally, but using this trick opens up new potential solutions for each of the puzzles. There was also a discovery made that blocking at the start of the puzzle would increase your movement speed in the puzzle room, thus saving about 9 seconds. While KJ was away, Adam and Clean Sarah were hard at work on Fable TLC. With little optimizations here and there, KJ's 11951 started to look more and more surpassable. Adam himself wasn't up for the task, but he saw the potential in Clean Sarah, the longtime second place runner. Clean joined the Fable community around the same time that KJ did, around March of 2015, but he never went after world record. Clean was content to improve his own time and work at his own pace, but this time was different. Adam could see it in Clean. Clean had a chance now to take the record from the player who dominated the game for years. He's seen how I do, um, where I've improved, um, yeah, well, like, um, he's, he, if it weren't for, like, his inspiration, I'm not sure I would have quite gotten that time when I did. I, I probably would have come back at some point later on, who knows how further along yeah. in time, and probably gotten close to that, but, um, I don't know. That, that's, that's a, that's a big realm of what ifs right there. Clean worked for months, improving his time and working on strats, grinding out run after run. Finally, on July 25th, 2018, Clean managed to tie the world record RTA, while losing about 15 seconds due to a bug in the Jack of Blades fight. Five seconds off of world record. <laughs> it's hard to overstate my satisfaction. It's possible for Jack of Blades to end up stuck beneath the ground, forcing you to use Inflame to kill him. Oh no! Oh, damn you, Jack! Motherfucker! Clean was so close, but just barely missed. This time, reawakened KJ, who attempted to run Fable again, but he was again plagued by technical difficulties. For Clean, it was a narrow miss. It was now or never. A few days after the tie, Clean was doing offline runs. While losing time to a few of his own splits, Clean holds a several second lead on the world record for the first half of the run. However, Clean loses 13 seconds in the arena to a bad round of bandits. After the arena, Clean continues to lose time on rescuing the archaeologist, putting him behind world record by 16 seconds. It doesn't look good for Clean, but in Litchfield Graveyard, Clean got great RNG. While fishing for Nostro Shield, Clean gets a great fish RNG and ends up saving 20 seconds over world record on fishing alone. Clean is back to being neck and neck with KJ's record. After a solid maze fight, Clean is ahead by a few seconds, but really pulls away with a faster Fireheart puzzle room using puzzle punching and block reset. Now 18 seconds ahead, Clean is on the home stretch. He manages to maintain his lead and gets decent RNG in Necropolis. 
Clean keeps his composure and sails through the final boss rush, cleanly taking out Thunder, Briar, Nostro, and Dragon Jack. Clean completed Fable TLC in 119.47 RTA, a 4 second world record. Finally, a runner had surpassed the great KJ Freshly. KJ's 3 year long chokehold on the leaderboard was no more, at least for the next few weeks. KJ, inspired by Clean Sarah's recent world record, roared back and lowered the world record down to 119.17. GG. Using the new strats that Clean implemented, with the help of decent RNG, KJ is able to shave 30 seconds off the world record, and that is where the world record stands today. So where do we go from here? Well, both KJ and Clean have plenty of available time save in their runs, with an average of about one minute of free time to cut out. Beyond that, the sky might be the limit. For instance, it is possible to obtain the Sword of Aeons using a summon clip early in the run. The strategy wizards in the TLC community are crunching the numbers to see if this saves or loses time across the entire run. If this round is close to being faster or just even, it's a safer route with less RNG that may allow runners to do more runs and less resets. Additionally, there is a trick that can be used to access Bowerstone North early called Trash Jump. Rolling on some terrain at specific angles will cause the geometry to throw you in strange directions. Using this throw, it is possible to launch yourself from a pile of boxes and planks up and over the wall that leads to Bowerstone North, where the Solace Greatsword can be obtained. The problem with this trick is that it is incredibly precise with no setup, thus it is essentially luck-based. The other main problem is that the Solace Greatsword wouldn't get any real use for the early part of the run until Arena but the time required to get it would be more than the time saved. So while both of these ideas have interesting route changes, they currently provide no potential time save unless new discoveries can put these ideas to use. And as far as new discoveries go, the community has been searching for two skips that would both prove to be major time saves, a Bargate prison skip and a graveyard skip. Prison skip would be finding a way to skip having to sit through the 10 minute quest of Bargate prison. Since the game takes away your possessions and your ability to cast spells, summon clipping is out of the question. The graveyard skip would cut out having to collect Nostro's shield in the graveyard, thus skipping fishing RNG, the only time fishing is required by the game in the entire run. The Fable TLC community believes that there is still a good sized nugget somewhere in the game that hasn't been discovered. The Fable community isn't done with the game yet. You can expect to see more runs and cool discoveries in this game in the future. GG.